Hey, sometimes when I do this show, I have a little trouble finding the tree that I'm looking for. You know, I roll up to the general area where I know the tree is and just kind of wandering around, hoping I'll find it. Uh, you know, it might be hidden in like a grove of other trees or down in a valley, something like that. But that is not a problem that I'll have with the eastern white pine. And that's because the eastern white pine here is by far the largest species of conifer you'll find in this part of the world. As you can see, a good size one of these will just tower over everything around it. I gotta be honest though, I'm not sure exactly which one of the eastern white pines in this particular grove is the champion. They're all of pretty similar size, but I know one of them is. Probably this one here with the super thick trunk. In fact, a lot of these trees have super thick trunk with branches that stretch really far outward rather than growing at a more upward angle, which uh, can tell you that this tree probably grew up without a lot of other trees around it. This isn't specific to the eastern white pine, but trees that grow up in dense forest will typically grow taller with branches angled more upward so that they can stay out of the shade of the other trees around them. Uh, this pine here didn't have that problem, thus it's massive trunk and huge branch spread. I definitely can't get close to any of the needles, but if I could, you'd see some nice long feathery needles in clusters of five. You can use that fact to help you identify the tree. The word white has five letters in it, and the eastern white pine needles grow in clusters of five. Easy. As far as range grows, you'll find this tree up in Canada from Newfoundland across to Manitoba and then in the United States from up here in New England down through the Appalachians all the way to northern Georgia. This tree is real hardy too. It can grow in a wide variety of soil compositions and handle a good amount of heavy weather. It gets used a lot as a windbreak or erosion control tree because of that. It does have some issues with pests though. The white pine weevil in particular can really mess these guys up. Because of its immense size, this tree also has a lot of lumber value, especially a couple hundred years ago when eastern white pine of this size were a lot more common. Its wood is typically free of knots too, so this tree saw use as like pretty much everything, furniture, construction, whatever. Its most famous application though is definitely as ship masts due to the size and strength of the trees. Uh, like the original mast of the famous ship, the US Constitution, for example, was made from a tree of this species. All right, now I actually got a lot more cool stuff to tell you about the eastern white pine. But first, we gotta do a quick location change. You see, I can't do a video on giant eastern white pines in Massachusetts without taking you to the Peace Grove. The Peace Grove is a stand of massive eastern white pines out in the wood, rivaling the state champion that we just saw. You see, because of logging and clearing for pasture land, eastern white pines of that size are super hard to find, making a stand out in the woods of them a total rarity. Uh, but more on that subject later. Got to make it there, about a half mile walk. And here we are in the Peace Grove. So like I was talking about earlier, this stand of Eastern white pine here contains 24 trees over 150 feet tall, which is insanely rare. There's pretty much nowhere left on the planet with this density of massive white pines. In fact, some of them even have names like the Jake Swamp Pine, named for the famous Mohawk Native American chief. Saheda, named for a Mohawk elder who was killed over a disagreement involving the beaver pelt trade. In fact, this whole area's name stems from Native American culture. The grove was named and dedicated in 1997 as the Peace Grove in reference to the fact that in many different Native American traditions, the eastern white pine is known as the Tree of Peace. You know, I read a lot of different accounts on why it was bestowed with that moniker. Some say that the famous five nations were convinced to come together and quit fighting under the symbolism of the five needles clustered on an eastern white pine representing each of the tribes. And the Iroquois have a long history with the tree. It was common practice to bury weapons of war at the base of an eastern white pine to recognize the induction of a peace agreement. More than anything though, this grove of trees is remarkable simply because it's about as close as we can get to a breed of forest that no longer exists on this earth. 
You see, the largest living eastern white pine in the world that we know of is no bigger than 190 feet tall. And none of the trees in the Peace Grove here are older than 200 years of age. Yet, when European colonists first reached North America, they described miles and miles of forests of 400-year-old eastern white pine towering upward of 220 feet tall. Now we have small stands like this with trees that are starting to approach that 220-foot figure. And we have individual trees near that 400-year-old mark. But those massive, ancient forests that covered so much of the Northeast before the colonists got here are simply gone, logged and cleared for pasture land out of existence. In fact, the Peace Grove here is former pasture land. It was just converted back into forest a lot sooner than some of the younger pine forests around here. Don't fret though, from what I've read, these pine trees and ones around the country like them have been growing remarkably fast. Just 30 years ago, these trees were a lot shorter. While nobody alive today will ever see one of those pre-colonial style eastern white pine forests, not you, not me, and probably not even our kids, our grandkids might, if we really want them to. See you next time.